right, so I finally got my water-cooled E3D head finished. Um, what I did is I took a standard E3D head uh, and measured this section right here, and then I made a custom section that had uh, seal surfaces top and bottom and some fins in the center for heat transfer. That is a Turnigy water cooled jacket for a, I think it's a 20 millimeter, uh, 20 millimeter in runner motor. And so far it seems to be printing pretty well. I was having issues with heat creep, and that's why I went and did this because the this printer is in my garage and the temperatures range from 77 degrees or so to 100 degrees and when it was really hot the printer would only print maybe a layer if not less and then it would just stop and what would happen is I would get a bubble I'm trying to find a piece of uh, uh, I don't have any um, filament laying around but I would get a bubble and the bubble would happen just above the heat break. So here's a Chinese knockoff. I would get a bubble about right here and then it would swedge. At that point the extruder would strip and the print would just die. And there was nothing I could do to fix it. I did go and use a, a blower and this improved things but um, what would happen I believe is that my filament, because it's in my garage, it's humid. I live in Houston, Texas, 100% humidity, a lot of heat, a lot of water. And I believe the filament would absorb water and then allow that heat to work up the tube faster than it would if it were dry because if I had a brand new roll of filament, it would work great for about a week or less. Um, and then all of a sudden my prints would just start dying. And it was very frustrating. Um, and if I went and dried my filament, then I wouldn't have this issue. So now I'm also in the process of building a dry box for my filament, so I can start printing nylon and keep my other ABS filaments like this dry so that I don't have these issues, but I did this just to, for fun. Um, if anybody does want the aluminum piece that goes inside of there, let me know. Um, they're going to cost somewhere around 40 bucks, and then you have to buy, uh, you know, one of these. These, I, I wasn't terribly happy. Again, you know, at five bucks off uh, of Hobby King, these fittings screw into that block right there. So these are not one-piece fittings; they're three-piece fittings uh, or two-piece fittings. And this screws into here with about a half a thread. Um, and what I was getting is I would put my tubes on and I would start getting leaks and I couldn't figure out where I was getting leaks from. I thought it was from the tube to here but what I finally figured out was that this uh, nipple is screwed into uh, this block of, uh, block right here and that's where my leaks were. I believe my leaks were coming from because once I tightened everything up it didn't leak anymore and I was happy. Uh, and I also have my water tank here. I think you can see the water coming out right there. The water coming out is not much. If you look at how fast the water's coming out, it's not very fast. It doesn't take much water to cool it. And that is slightly warm, I'd say. I'm getting more heat coming just coming up uh, from the air than I am from my finger on that aluminum heat on that aluminum uh, block right there. So the water cooling seems to be doing its uh, thing. I did have to increase the temperature on the extruder from about 230 to 240. Um, one of the things I might need to do is change the depth of the drill going up into the aluminum piece that I made just to give a little bit more standoff between the aluminum piece and the heater block. All right, well, if you got any questions, you can email me at eric1565 at yahoo.com. Uh, or just put a comment. Alright, thank you.